former Euro Europe editor of the Wall Street Journal. Yes. Um, uh, and now going into media yourself, launching uh, Actually, it's, um, it's um, a new business uh, newspaper and website in India, that, and we've launched, uh, we just launched about six months ago. Mm -hmm. It's a paper called Mint, mm -hmm. and uh, the website is called LiveMint.com. And the reason... LiveMint.com. Yeah. <laughs> the reason to uh, want to do a paper, um, you know, in this day and age, nobody's really starting newspapers. So it seems like suicidal at one level. But there are a few countries in the world like India and China and maybe Brazil and Russia where newspapers are still very much an aspirational um, element to it. Uh, the readership is growing as well as the advertising market seems pretty robust. The larger reason to do a paper in India was uh, partly because a lot of Indian business papers are very insular and very inward looking. But all the changes that are happening to India, it's becoming kind of the flavor of the decade, if you will, or maybe the century, uh, is happening because whether one agrees or not, it's taking its you know, rightful place in the global economy. To try to capture some of that, connect India to the world and the world to India in a business sense, that was the reason to want to launch a new business paper. So, so your, your focus is launching a newspaper? Um, that was what it was. I've been working for about a year now. Um, I left the Wall Street Journal about 15 months ago to move to India mm -hmm. to plan and launch this paper. And the paper launched on February 1st. Okay, and it's based where? It's uh, headquartered in Delhi. We publish out of Delhi and uh, Mumbai right now, mm -hmm. and we'll soon be publishing in Bangalore and uh, Calcutta. And who are your main competitors? India is very unusual in the sense that it's got four uh, national business newspapers in English. No other country in the world uh, actually has you know, more than one or two at best. Uh, so we are the, technically we are the fifth paper. So it's the Economic Times, the Business Standard, they're all local uh, papers that have been around. The youngest uh, is about... A little bit why you say Brazil, Russia, is it Brazil, Russia, India, China? Are you the ones you... In, why, why are these markets that are particularly susceptible to being I mean, good for newspapers? Or take India, for example. Um, the literacy rates is still around 68, 70 percent, and when, and it's growing. So there's a large section of, in, and it's a 1.1 billion population. So there are about 304 million people who are not yet become readers of anything. And um, as literacy rates grow up, a lot of them end up reading newspapers as one of the first things they do. And for business newspapers, because the economy is starting to kind of take off, it's becoming more of an open economy. A lot more jobs are being created in the private sector, and as a result, there's a lot more interest about stock markets and about carriers and finances and companies. So there is a demand from that side as well. On the advertising side, which is the main you know, revenue source for newspapers, uh, the internet penetration is still very, very low in India. Only 4% of Indian households have a PC, let alone high-speed bandwidth. So as a result, I think it will take about 10, 15 years before some of the problems in the West that newspapers are dealing with will come to India. Interesting. So, rising literacy, uh, weak internet. And uh, uh, an economy that's kind of doing very well. The economy so. is doing well and globalizing faster than yeah. some, of the new, some of the current market players are, are really yeah. fully aware. And fundamentally, newspapers remain very aspirational. What happens is as, uh, there's a lot of migration as well. So when people move from villages to cities, um, they start reading newspapers. Who, who is your target reader? It's a 28 to 45 year old um, educated urban you know, reader. That's mm -hmm. kind of what I'm going after. It's a pretty broad segment, if you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, because newspapers are aspirational, people want to be seen reading one, people want to be associated with a newspaper. And that's where kind of the HT Media, which is the parent company of this new newspaper, helps because they've been around for some 80 some years. In fact, the paper was started by Gandhi. Uh, Hindustan Times, which is the flagship paper, as a way to kind of voice India's opinion against the British. So it's got a lot of um, credibility, if you will, as mm -hmm. a company. So a combination of these factors and the fact that the lineage of the company is pretty good is the reason why... Are, are there any other ways you're setting apart the paper? The Financial Times is pink, for example. The... All Indian um, business papers, um, three out of four, are pink, actually. <laughs> so we decided that we'd do a white paper. The biggest, um, there are two or three big differences. Uh, one is, uh, it's the first Berliner format newspaper, which is um, like The Guardian or some of the British papers, which is essentially a smaller paper, it's not a tabloid. Kind of like Le Monde in France. Exactly. And so the size um, is also kind of a unique differentiator. The name of the paper itself is also a differentiator in the sense that we found a lot of people in India think of business papers as a very hard to read and uh, very complicated. And most of them are named like Economic Times, you know, uh, Financial mm -hmm. Express, Business Line. So we chose a name that in India actually connot uh, connotes success. Mm -hmm. Because if you're doing very well in India, people say that he's minting money. Mm -hmm. And mint has a little bit of freshness to it as well. 
So we did some, you know, kind of branding and size and other stuff. But the biggest difference is really in terms of um, how we present content. Indian newspapers tend to be very insular. Mm -hmm. Just to give an example, there'll be a lot of stories about the fact that the chairman of Pepsi uh, is an Indian, right. of Indian origin. Right. But most of the stories will be about her wearing a sari to her board meetings. Very right. little about PepsiCo and how it's doing. Right. So right. Right. It, Mint tries to do a much more of an analytical did, piece. Did you think about making it a free newspaper? What is it? Was that a consideration? Um, it was. In, in theory, newspapers are almost free in India. They cost five cents, by the way. A newspaper in India costs about five cents, so you can't even buy a cup of tea for that price anymore. So most of your revenue does come from advertising. So it's, it's a... Right. The reason to charge is because uh, the distribution model is based on um, very local distributors who are given a commission for every copy. So you have to have a fa face value. The other reason to charge uh, something for it is there's a huge recycling market in India for newspapers. So if you don't charge it, it'll just go straight, it'll just to, recycling. Go straight to recycling. <laughs> so it's a very different business model. Very interesting. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Such a different market. It is. It's uh, you know.